You're listening to We Deep in Media. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Deepen with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber, founder and CEO of We Deepen, Feminine Weapon, and also a certified professional love coach and matchmaker. If you haven't lately, go check out all the upcoming social and transformational experiences at wedeepen.com. Hit on the social calendar. Uh, once you go there, you'll see tons, lots of Tantra speed dates are happening. Uh, this is by the Tantra Institute. They're spread throughout the United States, Amsterdam, London, Canada. Uh, these experiences are for you if you are currently single. And how ironic, Tantra speed dating. It is an experience for you to slow down, make connection with a room full of people. If you are using dating apps, why not just go and try? Also, you know, all the t- oftentimes people ask about um, the types of people that attend a Tantra speed date. And I'll say that you never know who's going to be there. You just don't know. And the activities that they facilitate because it's run by the Tantra Institute, you're going to learn something that you can take back to your own personal dating life. So check it out. Tantra Speed Date. You'll see it all over the calendar. And uh, when you RSVP through We Deepen, you'll get a, a promo code that will allow you to get a special member rate. Member rate. Um, also upcoming, we have the Unleashed Transformational Festival that's happening in Sacramento or Grass Valley, California on uh, November 2nd through November 5th. Um, Unleash is one of my favorite experiences. You camp out. It's an intimate festival. When I say intimate festival, it's about 200 people. And uh, everybody is fully self-expressed. It's substance free. Um, you will see people when I say self-express, there is some um, nudity, uh, but it's nudity in a way that you don't feel as though people are like sticky with sexual energetics. It's about being fully authentically yourself. And Yadi Iksa, who runs that program, she's a best friend of mine. And it is through and through her heart work and she shares it. Um, with you and she just and like I, I highly recommend checking out unleash also the weekend after is the wonderland conference um the wonderland conference is by microdose it's a psychedelic longevity mental health conference it's happening in miami florida again this is november 9th through the 11th i'll be there facilitating the dating dojo the playful portal as well as a mind-blowing intimacy panel uh, we are going to be also inviting the We Deepen's new love club uh, to join us. If you register to join the love club, um, that's when you go to wedeepen.com. You'll see matchmaking or the love club. You can early apply to be a part of the of the club and also enter yourself into the matchmaking database. And uh, this group we're taking with us to the Wonderland Conference. Um, so you can come as a, 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 you know, just as you register like everybody else with a, but with a We Deepen promo code, or you can sign up for the I Love Club and your ticket is a part of that. And that's where our first love club in-person meeting will be. And when I say a love club, this is a matchmaking club. This is a group of humans who are currently single, who want healthy, epic love lives. And, uh, you know, to, to hire a matchmaker is a luxury um, to be able to do that. And we do do that. We work one-on-one with people. However, um, this experience is for uh, a group of us to come together and become comrades of our love life. And while we'll be bringing and curating new people into that group for you, you also can go and uh, become each other's matchmaker. And we include relationship education, as well as networking and in-person experiences. More to come on that. And the last thing um, before actually I'm going to tell you about my guest today has an amazing program coming up. Um, but also the the podcast after this one that's releasing is um, with Kimmy Inch. And Kimmy Inch is a pro dominatrix and a kink educator. And she has a something more 
four day immersion happening in Austin, Texas, October 19th through the 22nd. If you've ever been curious about BDSM, kink, exploring erotic wellness, this is where you go. Come with your partner if you're in relationship um, or if you're also work. I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast happen to be. Uh, I, I know that that there's a um, a lot of relationship experts don't want to be labeled as experts because we're all in the learning of relationships together. The intimacy coaches and such listen to this podcast. And this Kimmy has 20 years of experience in this industry. It's a great place to go to uplevel your education. And also if you're currently single to tap into um, your own sexuality. I know when I've gone through long stints, a period of time of being single, I miss being in the eroticism um, and uh, and this is a, an opportunity to come and feel that sense of connectedness with yourself and with a group and to um, and you never know who you're going to meet. So check that out. Those are all in the calendar. And then, you know, this is a there's there's a course. I have always dreamed of writing a book. And friends have told me for years that when I write this book, that they will read it. They'll buy the book. Um, and it's been a decade that I have been on this journey of um, dating, love, relationships, uh, studying intently, as well as having my own relational experiences. So I dreamed of writing a memoir where I get to share about these quirky adventures that I have and um, also integrates the lessons that I've learned along the way by studying some of the, and working with some of the greatest teachers. I've, you know, gotten to um, have front row seats with Esther Perel and Dr. John Gray, Gang Katie Hendricks, Brene Brown, uh, Dr. Sarah Nazaratam. And so I... I'm, I'm interweaving these lessons that I've learned inside of my personal journey because I, you know, I don't, I claim to be a, I guess a relationship guide and yes, I'm certified as a coach. Um, but oftentimes if you ever have had a one-on-one -on -one session with me or you've been in a, um, a group facilitated experience, you'll notice that I tend to bear my heart and share exactly what I'm navigating in the moment um, as well as mixing in those um, lessons that I've, that I'm learning along the way. So there is a program coming up. It's, it's a, it's a six week course, your best selling book by Maymay Fox, who is a best selling author herself. And she has been working as a ghostwriter, um, and, a publisher, um, a career author for what, yeah, numerous 25 years, 25 <laughs> years, which dates me. I like to say, well, then you're going to be able to figure out how old I am, but I don't care. I just turned 50 this year and I am proud of being 50. I love it. So yeah, 25 years I've been doing this professionally. Wow. And, and I'm so excited to, to have access to this course and to be able to share this course with others because it's the first time that it's happening. And oftentimes you think that the first time's happening, like, oh, maybe it's in beta. I don't know. But we've talked about the organization of this course and I've even experienced it myself. That's why I was like, give it to me. I want to bring the We Deep in Network in and I want to do it with them together. Um, and I know this is an intimate group. It's 20 people that are going to go through this program. And uh and I had a call with your team, a team member, Carrie, um, this this past week. And when she, you know, shared with me this opportunity, or I actually even I was like, I want to tell people about it. Um, we jumped on this podcast and I'll say I, I, I first learned about um, this course happening in the Summit at Sea WhatsApp group. And I happened to be scrolling through because we deep and partnered with Summit um, for the last summit at sea. And I didn't make it on the ship. However, I'm in this WhatsApp group. I rarely, you know, there's a lot of chit chat in WhatsApp groups. And so I sometimes chime in and not, but I caught this, um, this program happening. And I'm so glad I did. Mimi, thank you for jumping in to join me on this podcast episode. And I'm excited to dive in to be able to share what's going to happen in this course and see who it's right for. And also 
have an opportunity for me to introduce myself to you and to hear more about you through this our little chit chat today. Oh my goodness. It is my pleasure and my honor to be here, Christina. And I'm thrilled to get to know your We Deepen network a bit through this process as well. So let's start. You've been doing this for 25 years. How did you how did you make your way into this industry? Yeah, well, I like to say that it chose me rather than I chose it. Uh, it's one of those stories um, because I graduated from Stanford University with a bachelor's and a master's in psychology and um, thought I was going to go be a professor, but backed out of that at the last second, even like with an offer, offer on the table um, and decided to learn a little bit more about the world before I did more schooling. So I became a management consultant with McKinsey and Company, which is like this very elite, prestigious management consulting firm, blah, blah, blah. You know, lots of people are coveting that role. And it was, it's like an amazing organization with incredible, like the brightest, most amazing humans. But three months in, I was like, oh my God, this is not for me. (laughs) This is just not in alignment with my soul. The idea of like, making rich, powerful companies richer and more powerful. And it just wasn't lining up for me. And it was in that moment, even though I was only like 22 years old, that I knew I had to follow my life purpose. And I had to do work that was purpose driven. So I completed my two year program, got what I could out of it, and then was totally lost. And let's see what happens next. Had my like quarter life crisis. <laughs> what now? And a friend who was a doctor said, Hey, I know you love to write. Um, he's like, tw- you know, 15 years older than me, but he knew I loved to write. And he said, I want to write a book. It's going to be called Sexual Fitness. So it's actually kind of relevant to your network, your community. It's not a how-to sex guide at all. It's like a health and wellness book with better sexual health as a hook, as a selling point, rather than just weight loss or you know fitness or whatever. So it's really about diet, exercise, supplements, sleep, and a 30-day program at the end. So I was like, let's do this no idea what I'm doing, no experience, go to the bookstore, buy a book called how to write a book proposal, Mm -hmm. read it cover to cover, write the book proposal, email it out to everyone I know and say, does anyone know anyone in publishing who'd be willing to give me some feedback on this? And I was just looking for feedback, right? I mean, it's a complete newbie. And one of my friends write back and says, I'm sending it along to a friend who's very junior. We're all just out of college at Penguin Putnam. Well, a week goes by and she emails me and says, we never do this, but we're buying your book. So that was my entree into this world of publishing. They bought the book and the senior editor on that book, Amy Hertz at Penguin Putnam, just became my mentor. She loved working with me. So she took me under her wing and she said, you know, you can do this for a living. And I said, what do what for a living? I mean, I didn't even know this was a career. Um, and she said, ghostwrite, freelance, edit, co-author, co-author, you know, like other people's books, like the books of people who are they're either doctors like this guy I worked with or celebrities or they're business leaders or whatever. And that was the beginning. She got me a literary agent. She got me my next book project. And I was off to the races from there. And I've been doing it ever since. And you love writing. I love writing. Love it. It is my like preferred way of communicating. Um, I love to find the right word and I really love to work with other people to share their stories. I consider myself a book doula. I don't always use that language professionally, but I think with your crowd, it is um, relevant. I'm a book doula. So I know you have a book in you. And my core belief is that every single person on the planet has at least one great book in them, which is your own story, Mm. because no one else has had your life experiences. No one else has learned your lessons in the way you have. And other people want to hear it. Mm. They're inspired by it. They're changed by it. So I love helping people bird their books into the world. And my skill as a ghostwriter, co-author, freelance editor is maintaining your voice and your persona, you know, not mine, but 
making sure that it is your voice, but helping you organize it and do all the nitty gritty work and, you know, all the way through to completion of the book and then launching from there. And I do also have a degree as a life coach, which I got 15 years ago. I finished a master's in counseling psychology and became a life coach in part because I realized that half of my role as a ghostwriter and freelance editor and co-author was coaching because so much of the work is also around the psychology of, you know, you can do this, you can get it done, imposter syndrome, writer's block, meeting deadlines, right? It's, It's a coaching job too, which I love. So, yeah. Uh, So you've seen a lot over the 25 years of the changes within the industry. I remember when I, I, so I've always, I've, I've thought about writing a book for years and my podcast producer, I was telling him, he's like, no, 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 no. No one reads books anymore. Like get a podcast, do a podcast. People will listen to a podcast. When you say that everybody has a book inside of them, and if everyone was to write a book, who would read the books? So how have you seen the industry change? And I imagine, too, in your coaching, you could squash everything I just said of as one perspective um, or limiting belief, actually, that who's going to read your book? No one reads books anymore. So wild, radical changes in the publishing industry in 25 years. Just to back it up to when I started, you had one path, which was to find a traditional publisher to print your book and put it out there and distribute it. As we all know, that is long gone. And self-publishing is in, made it completely accessible for anyone who wants to have a really nice quality book out there. Amazon also emerged during this time. It used to be that books were sold in bookstores. Now, 90% of books are sold on Amazon. So you can do Kindle Direct Publishing. I mean, it's it's a radically different world. And so, yes, everyone can write a book. Everyone has a book in them. And the world has changed dramatically. And more people are writing books. Here's what I say to people. It's not about selling your book to 8 billion people on the planet. Mm. It is about finding your tribe. Mm. Your book tribe is what we call it and connecting with them. And they are going to want to read your book. These are people who care about the issues you're talking about. You're not trying to convince somebody who's a neuroscientist to read a book about, you know, a memoir about a, a grueling childhood where, you know, you emerged as an author per se. You are sharing your story with your community, your people who want to learn your life lessons. And within that community, you absolutely can make an impact. And here's what I would say also about the don't write a book, do a podcast. Well, do both. I mean, both and because they go hand in hand, you know, and same thing with speaking. I've talked to a number of people who are speakers already And they have actually been turned down for some of their speaking engagements because they don't have a book. Oh, interesting. So it's interesting because the book opens the door for speaking. It lends you credibility when, you know, the word author is in the word authority, right? Think about that. An authority is an author, right? It just instantly ups your credibility to the next level. So you're opening doors that you wouldn't have opened before. You don't write the book to make money off the book. If we're getting into the actual business side of things, you write the book to elevate your brand, connect more deeply with your audience, leave a legacy behind for your friends, family, children, grandchildren, because who knows what's going to happen to all this digital stuff that's recorded. And if you have a podcast, the book helps your authority on the podcast. The book helps your authority as a speaker. But also you sell more books Mm -hmm. by being a speaker and having a podcast, right? Because that's Mm -hmm. also your audience and it's all part of the same, right? It's Mm -hmm. all your brand, your Mm -hmm. platform. And so I really encourage people to think about it that way and 
don't necessarily go into the process thinking I have to have a New York Times bestseller. There are ways to get to an Amazon bestseller that are very modern day marketing, you know, that had nothing to do with when I started 25 years ago about SEO and keywords and dropping your price the night before and blah, blah, we can talk about all of that. But that's, there's a strategy for Amazon bestseller, but it's, you know, it's achievable to have a really high quality, beautiful book that you're proud of and that changes people's lives. And that I like people to have that be their primary motivation. Yeah. And, and to, and to rip off of what you're saying is a, a friend of mine, Gina Squire, she, it took her four years to get her book out. She, she writing it and, and getting it through to the right publisher and, and everything was changing along the process. And she was, was signed with a publisher, then dropped by a publisher and then signed by a publisher and dropped by a publisher. Um, but now that her book is out, it's, it's called PS. I love me. And, uh, all of her clients come through her book. All of her retreat attendees come through her book and she was successful beforehand, but now the book sells, um, all of her work. So it can, it can definitely, as you say, it, it finds its tribe. Um, also too, when I work with, when people will come to me, cause I've had a podcast since, you know, I first had your love accomplice, which was my first podcast from 2017 to 2018. And then I launched deep in with Christina in 2021. And so people will, will come to me around, you know, and, and the first, you know, when you launch a podcast, I usually tell people like, stay away from analyzing your analytics. Like, don't look at them. You're just, just start and just practice and get it out there. And oftentimes as a, as a speaker, a facilitator, if you get in a, to get in a room full of a hundred people takes a lot of work. You have to send out RSVPs. You have to get people to show up in person, drive there, rent a space, all things with this. You have a captivated audience, even if only a hundred people are listening to this episode um, or, or to your podcast. Like that is a captivated audience that is listening to you for an hour. <laughs> so important. So important. So it doesn't need to be, you know, oftentimes we get in this comparison mindset and we see, you know, and and two, it's, you know, I could even have this um, sometimes self, um, you know, comparison, social media, you know, my social media, I think there's like a little bit over 7,000 followers on social media. And I have friends who have a million followers. And if I play that game of the comparison, and, and I have thought about it, you know, when I think of actually putting together a book proposal, like, oh no, the publishers are going to go and look at my Instagram and I don't have much there. But if they dived deeper into some of the back end stuff of we deepen and our email list and our open rates and our SMS list and our circuit community and our WhatsApp groups, like there's actually a vast sea of listeners and um, engaged, uh, an engaged network out there in the world. Uh, so how would you, yeah, how, how would you respond to somebody who felt maybe, like, how do you know when you're ready to do it? Well, I want to respond to it. If it's okay, I want to respond to what you just said. Please. Because this is actually a great case study for people to hear. Um, one is I want to talk to you about why you want a traditional publisher. Because there's a misunderstanding, a misconception, very common misconception about what that entails that I'd love to address. But also I want to say that the story you just told actually is a provocative and engaging story to tell in a book proposal. It's not, I have 26 million followers, but I'm a celebrity. You know, they click on one, we have a 1% open rate, right? Um, or maybe even somebody who has like 100,000 followers, but they bought half of them because people do that too, right? They're not real. They're not even real humans. So whatever that is, I mean, having a big email list is actually a huge selling point for mm -hmm. traditional publishers. Your email list, not just your social media, but your email list, your engagement, your open rate, your click-through rate, the events you're doing in person, the podcast, all of this like actually makes you a fairly attractive candidate with the numbers that you have 
to a traditional publisher. I'm, I'm just telling you, Christina, yeah, but also you. your followers hear that. And I have to give a little antidote to that too, is, yeah. you know, Unleash, I talked about Unleash um, in the opening of the Transformational Festival. And um, I've been working with Unleash since it's 2018. And she had uh, the last big festival had brought on, you know, these influencers to support in the ticket sales. And, uh, and I love it. it's Yeti because she's my best friend. We're all learning lessons along the way. We're happy to share them. And, uh, you know, she set these influencers up really nicely at the festival. You know, they had these glamping tents and um, she put them on the, you know, on the, the run of show or on the, on the bill. And, um, and her thought was that they were going to help sell tickets. And whereas, you know, little we deepen and Christina at the end of it, I was like, Hey babe, how many, um, how many tickets did this, you know, influencer with a million followers sell versus right. the influencer sold one. Amazing. He sold over 20. Wow. Yeah. What a so story. This is like these, <sighs> the numbers that we see. It's sometimes it's, it's not the true full story that we create in our heads of what's really That's happening. Right. And if you're going to take the time and invest in writing a book and it's your story and it's your heart on the page, like it, it is something that you care passionately about, right? And you really want your readers to care about it too, right? So it's not, it's not the numbers game. Like it's really, um, it's a profound process to go through writing the book. It will change you. You will be changed by the process of writing your book mm. because you are going to rewrite your narrative, tell it any way you want. And that is so empowering. So I've noticed as I'm getting ready um, or, you know, fantasizing about doing this program, uh, these fears have come up. Um Number one, the fear of like the, the program and we'll be transparent here. It's $5,000. Yeah. $5,000 to this course. And, um, and I am bootstrapping. We deepen. Yep. Um, I, you know, there's in a previous podcast, I'm very transparent about, um, about finances. And, um, uh, I, you know, recorded a podcast recently. It's the currency of love. And we talk about money and relationships. And I shared a story of how, um, I, uh, you know, I tend to in, in, in dating and, and in my ecosystem, there's high net worth people all around me. And, uh, at the beginning of July, there was $40 in we deepens business accounts. And that same morning, um, a friend who I was with and who I was dating was like, I lost $20 million this morning. And I'm like, this is fascinating and interesting um, experience to be in. I have $40. You lost 20 million this morning. And I can see you're more upset than I am for only having $40 in my account. Uh, and since, you know, money flows to us in unique ways. I mean, now at through, through the month of July, we, and now we're towards the end of August in 2023. And um, through that period of time, I think I've, we've had over 17,000 run through our account um, in this well, yes. bravo. I mean, yes. that's fantastic. To yes. hear. So Good things, job. That's amazing. You should feel so proud. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So things yeah. can change, but I, yes. I realize like this is, this is a financial commitment. Um, so if I'm going to do this, that's probably even going to be more of a driver to complete the book, set the course aside, but it's almost that I've invested in myself and in this program that I have to complete it because I have to create a return on investment for it. So whether I know the program isn't shit, but even if the program is shit, I'd be like, oh my God, I've got, I've got to do this because I've put the money forward. And, and that's just like a future, like a future investment in myself. Now then having the structure of the program, because I'll say is I have document after document over the past few years that I started writing. And maybe there's something in this word document and something in this word document. And I'm like, Oh, how do I organize all these thoughts and where do I start? And where does the story begin? And, um, and that's what I'm hoping through this program is that I'll get a sense of how to outline it. Even two of um, what concept do I go with? Because there's been multiple 
book concepts writing through? Do I start with a memoir? Do I start with this other project that I think over here? Not quite sure. So I'm hoping that through the course, I'll also get the accountability and the um, and the the organizational elements that I need to actually be successful in completing this project. Well, I'm so glad you are speaking my language because we thought really long and hard about the pricing and part of there's it's twofold. One is exactly what you said, which is particularly in this first cohort of no more than 20 high achievers who are those we have signed up are entrepreneurs, professors, business professionals, high achieving folks. We want you to commit enough money and time that you are going to get it done because I want nothing more than to see you be successful. I am completely invested in your success and you need to be invested in doing the work to see this through. So that is exactly what you said, the psychology of putting down enough money that you're like, man, I'm going to do this, right? I am not, I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a book by the end of the year. Doable. You can do it. There's another level, which is the accountability you talked about. You're in a cohort. And most of us know the difference between going off and doing something alone, especially like writing a book, which is by its nature a bit lonely. You have to spend quite a few hours sitting by yourself at your computer, pulling those notes together, writing the material, but you're in community. In this, you have a cohort of 20 who is cheering you on, holding you accountable. We do set deadlines throughout the course, like let's have your table of contents done. Let's have your introductions done. Let's, you know, use this software program that helps you organize it all. Get your stuff that you've already written input in there, organized. But for sure, we are going to talk about like, what's the book, how to organize the book, how to actually write it. And you're going to do that with the support of these other amazing humans. Mm. And we have a community and we have like an online community. So you can be chatting every day and we're going to encourage people to check in every day. Like I wrote for, we, we have a goal that you will write for at least five minutes a day. And that comes straight from James Clear, Atomic Habits. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And he says you have way more likelihood of success if you commit to five minutes a day than if you say like, this big, hairy, audacious goal of like, I'm going to finish a book by the end of the year. So at least five minutes a day, you can check in every day with your community. You can share your table of contents and get feedback, not just from me, but from 20 other people who are all really exceptional, amazing people who are going to be your test audience, right? And you can A-B test titles on that. And, you know, it's so it's going to be really supportive All these people are very heart-centered. I'm super excited for this first cohort. Well, and and (sighs) too, I figured if I'm going to do it, I mean, I'm such an enroller. I want other people to do it with me. (laughs) Like send my friends along the way, send my colleagues. Let's do this together. It's going to be a community effort. I'm sure the people that you're out there and um, meeting with and bringing into the program are going to be wonderful as well. Amazing. Um, But I, let's put, you know, my book on the same shelf with other people from the We Deep In ecosystem um, together. And a lot of people, you know, who listen to this podcast and who are part of We Deep In want healthy, loving relationships and are have a story to share around love and relationships. And and so for us to be able to um, do this together, I could maybe we take a bookshelf. <laughs> I, I don't know if people still go to I love that <laughs> idea. I love the idea. I'm going to create a bookshelf for your best selling book, too. So all your books will be up there right behind me the next time. Yes. I teach. Front and center. I love but that. You know, you know, I'm going to promote the heck out of everybody who does this uh, course with us. Too. We're all going to promote each other, we're all going to uplift each other. Um, I love this idea of inviting your community to do it with you, Christina, what that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when we do, so like how, how will we figure out where to start our books or what is the right, what's the right concept? Right. I mean, the, the thing to do is to start writing. It's just to start writing. 
And my feeling is that you will find your truth in what this first book is very quickly when you start writing it. Mm. It will it will coalesce, but you're you will have feedback from the others in the group as well. And I certainly can help you narrow in. Um, we're gonna have in addition to the live masterclass. So this is also the difference. This isn't a five hundred dollar course because you're not just watching a bunch of recorded videos. It is we are walking you through as a community. So each week there's a masterclass where I teach it. And I've been working really hard on this content. And I did a trial run of it back in March with two friends. So it's been vetted. That is the masterclass of everything from structuring to writing, to editing, to publishing and launching the whole process. Then we have weekly small groups, which is no more than 10 people in a workshop to workshop material. And that is going to be your chance to get this hands-on from your community feedback in the workshop session, as well as whatever you want to post in the online community. On top of that, I've added in two hours a week of open office hours where I'm just going to be hanging out on Zoom. And if you want to show up and talk about like, hey, Mamie, we're week one. I have this idea, that idea, which do you think I should do? We can talk about it and we can do, you know, a little bit of a search online and see what else is out there. You're going to do a competitive analysis. So that's going to help you focus in on what you're going to write. Um, and so you have lots of opportunities to connect with me and connect with other people in the class to help you um, hone in on exactly what you want this first book to be about. Uh, so I hope that answers that question. What if, what if I don't feel like I, I, there's, there's other people who are better writers than me and chat GBT has been so helpful in my business yep. and I emails yep. and organize myself. And I imagine we'll be able to access that tool. Oh, heck yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yes. I mean, I, was scared of it for a couple months and I avoided it. And then I jumped on around January of this year and I was like, Oh my gosh. I mean, yes, every step of the way there are opportunities to use chat GPT or pseudo, right. I really love S U D O right. Um, read Z. I mean, there's many, many platforms, but we're going to talk about using generative AI as a tool. It cannot write your book for you. So and it can't tell you how to, you know, which publishing model to choose and how to launch and all that that's part of the course. But it is a tool that we will use every step of the journey because it will help you choose a title, write your table of contents, and editing. I think that really where generative AI is already at an extraordinary level is editing. I mean, I plugged in my own stuff in there. And I don't take all the edits, but sometimes I'm like, dang, that was such a good rewrite mm -hmm. <laughs> of a sentence. Like it's shifted a clause from the middle of the sentence to the beginning or something. I mean, which is like getting a little into editorial speak, but it's like, oh, wow, that was just some better way of saying that. Um, so we are definitely going to be talking about that. And this is part of why I feel confident and I would have would not have before this year. I would not have felt confident saying you can finish your book. But now I feel confident saying that because you can finish your book. You have a human community, a human guide, and you have an AI buddy. When you say can finish our book, does that mean in seven weeks? By the end of the year, I would I say. Guess, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd say by the end of the year. Because and we're starting in September. We'll finish the course end of October. That gives you two more months for filling out. But you have the title, the structure, the bang up awesome introduction. And then the rest, you will be able to fill in. And it also doesn't have to be and shouldn't be long. I haven't talked about this, but this is part of people's micro attention spans when you're talking about like nobody reads anymore. So make it short. Mm -hmm. 50,000 words, 80,000 words. Like we're not talking about these tomes. Mm -hmm. you know, so you can do it. You can do it. Um, and if you're open to it, I really would love to discuss the publishing models because you brought this up at the beginning. Can we yeah. dive into that? Because I yes. made a note here to, to talk about it. Um, so many people over 25 years 
the first question out of their mouth is like, how do I get a literary agent? How do I get a traditional publisher when they talk to me? Right. And honestly, this was one of the big reasons why I decided I wanted to do a course is because I get the same questions over and over again for 25 years. And this is the number one question. I understand the allure of a traditional publishing house. It's like a little extra added credibility or stamp of approval on your work. But there are huge trade-offs for choosing that model where marketing experts like Seth Godin, who I'm sure you know is international best-selling author and marketing guru, he started self-publishing a decade ago. Mm. There is a very powerful argument for choosing self-publishing or hybrid publishing um, in terms of First of all, just you you pay, you, you're basically handing over to the publisher 90% of your revenue. And two, they control some of the IP, the intellectual property about like where you can republish where it's being sold. And three, they take a long time. Like we're talking a year, 18 months, maybe two years before your book is on the shelf. Whereas if you self-publish, you could finish it in December and have it on your shelf January 1 and selling it and using it as your ticket and your door opener. And we'll go into all of that and more in the course, but the traditional publishing model is a self-limiting belief for some people, especially if they're not even on your level of saying like, I have this really powerful network, this powerful community. We support each other. I have high open rates. I speak all the time. Like you're a pretty public figure. A lot of people might not have any of that, right? And so they're sitting there going like, I don't have any of that. A publisher is not going to choose me. And this is actually the reality. It's true. They are buying books based on following. They are. So if you can't kind of prove that you can promote it on your own, they're not going to be interested in most cases, unless you're like really stellarly famous as a, you know, astrophysicist or something, maybe. So You have to think about these other models, but there are real advantages to them. Owning your IP, editing whenever you want, selling at whatever price you want, wherever you want, turning it into an audio book, publishing it, you know, a little bit at a time. And you're going to have to hustle a lot to market and promote. Traditional publishers do zero. Everyone I talk to thinks that a publisher helps you promote. They do not. Mm. Do not help you promote. Mm. Promotion is completely up to you. So I'm just saying. (laughs) So then it comes down to how do you market your book? So that's an entire like two sessions of the course out of six, because this is one other lesson that I have taught and said to people for 25 years and made me want to do this course is like, so you think writing the book you're done? No, writing the book is half of your journey of being a published author. Half your journey is writing the book. It's the deep, soulful exploration, inner journey piece of it, which is amazing. And then you come out and then you completely switch gears and you go from deep, soulful inner journey to promotion, promotion, promotion. Mm. And that is, as I said, there are tricks of the trade, like SEO keywords, Amazon, But there's also what we've been talking about, which is like building your tribe from months before the book comes out, who is going to support you, who's going to review you, who's going to, you know, order the book, give it a rating on Amazon, um, connecting with your speaking engagements, you're getting on podcasts, getting on local media, um, you know, possibly launching your own podcast. I'm so glad you brought that up because actually I have a whole, I do have these interviews with experts that are part of like the course where you can watch them whenever you want. One is my literary agent. One is a hybrid publisher. One is a self-publisher. One is an audio book publisher. One is a woman who started a podcast in January and already has like tens of thousands of followers on, you know, all of this. So you are promoting everything about your brand, not just the book, but you as a brand all at once. This makes perfect sense. It's actually a 
more of a reason for if you are a part of the We Deep In network for us to do this together, because through this ecosystem, we get to then fuel each other to market it together. Like I have, we have the SMS list, we have the WhatsApp groups, we have the We Deep In circle, we have the email list. And me just as like, you know, I'm a solo founder and uh, my team is building and I'd love to share the resources. So let's do it together. Yeah. You feel me. I feel you. Um, it's all like a, a circuitry of motivation inside of this. Um, it is. And it's a win-win because you're not competing. You know, it's not a competition. It's, it's like not, there's, all, there's everyone so for everybody. You know, there's so much. And we all lift each other up and we collaborate. And like maybe, you know, with your We Deep In Network, I could see you guys doing a communal book tour like actually oh, yeah, totally physical book tour totally. you know together where it's totally. like instead of just me showing up in san francisco there's going to be five of us and then we are tracking all of our networks and we're all going to share and yes and if yeah. somebody was to miss this time period you know yeah. this is starting september 18th right. of 2023 somebody may be listening to this podcast after what do they do? Well, there are going to be future cohorts. So you just go to writeyourbestsellingbook.com and all of the course information will be there. Writeyourbestsellingbook.com. It's also actually really a good idea to go there anyway, because it just, it takes you through all of this in detail of what's in the course, what are the bonus offers, um, you know, what you should expect as an outcome. All of it is all there. A little bit more about me and my background, so go there anyway. But yes, if you're listening to it after the September 18th first cohort, there will be future cohorts in 2024. Uh, this cohort I'm really jazzed about because it's just limited to 20 and it's really people in my network who I know personally. So I'm jazzed about that. But I am assuming that going forward, we'll continue to have really beautiful people who are attracted to this particular program versus something, as I said, where it's 500 bucks and you watch a bunch of videos. Hmm. Because it's about being in community. I will say when I did jump on the phone with your team and I heard the price was five thousand dollars, I was actually a little delightfully surprised. Uh, because in the coaching world and industry, that's actually a, a really um reasonable amount of money for a course. Um we I, I work a lot with um group programs and on dating and love and generally, yeah, the start is at 5,000, it's 5,000 and upwards. So, um, kudos. I, I was, I was like, okay, this is, this we, is, you know, as I said, we spent a lot of time thinking about it. We thought about charging 10,000 actually we did for all that's included in all of my time as an expert author, you know, I can pay $250,000 to ghostwrite a book. That was yeah. going to be our next question. Yeah. It was like, how does somebody yes. decide if they want to do this program or have a ghostwriter? Um, you just gave one of the reasons why they need uh, to do this was having a ghostwriter. I mean, yeah, I have other packages as well. With you know, there's an in between of like a twenty five thousand dollar package where I will one on one coach you for three months, and we will get to a complete book. But you have to put in some of the work. It's not a, it's not, you know, a complete ghost, right? In my parlance of the, is like, you just sit there and you, you know, I interview you and you hand me materials from your marketing and whatnot. And that's like a really high, like you want a really high profile book. You want like, I've done two books that were New York Times bestsellers, two that were chosen for Oprah's book list. Like that is like, you are serious. You want this to be creme de la creme. So there is a program for that, but uh, that is probably going to be done for a traditional publisher so that they're paying you in advance. And that ha that requires a certain level of your fame and influence. As I said, unfortunately, it's a numbers game these days with that. So there's an in-between. There's an in-between. Um, but the course is a great deal. It really is. And then when you think about all these videos that I've been recording with these experts that you also get to watch, you can hear straight from them. Mm. You know, what does it take from a literary agent? What does it take from a hybrid publisher? What does it take from several people who have successfully um, traveled this journey, like successful published authors? And I did speak to Carrie, your colleague, about um, timing. And yeah. she did share that five minutes a day. If you can write five minutes a day, 
and, um, you know, here are the hours that commit to each week. I know there's one of the weekly sessions that you can watch later or you can attend live the group program or the the group meeting. You do have to show up and be a part of it. Um, But somebody in their life, you know, this is coming up pretty quickly and we have to clear space uh, to have the time to do this. How much time should somebody make sure that they have available to really? Yeah. Sure this I mean, I will experience it for them. I at, at a minimum, the one hour a week of showing up for the workshop is pretty vital. That's when you're going to get the individual feedback and really hear from your cohort as well. And then on top of that, I would say I would love to see a commitment of no less than like half an hour a day to writing your own stuff, going on the community, you know, getting feedback, what you're doing, maybe doing some research, you know, you might not be writing the whole time. Some of it may be researching the competitive analysis, you know, SEO searches, running stuff through chat GPT or generative AI to give you different versions of a table of contents. So like if you can commit to half an hour a day and one hour a week, I think you can benefit from it. You don't have to entirely finish your book during the program. You will have the skills and you'll have the vision for the book promotion and launch plan. And you'll have the community mm-hmm. that continues. So you can continue to tap into that. There's a bonus, which I will tell you about here, at, which is a one-on-one editing working session with me at the end of the course. I think it's listed as like week seven, but that can be anytime you want. I don't mind if you want to do that in January, you know, it's up to you. I want, I want it to be when you're going to benefit the most from it. Yeah. And I, I, I have a feeling that you're probably really excited to even do those one-on-one sessions because I can see your excitement to work with the people who are, are part of this. I mean, before jumping on this, you're like, tell me about yourself. I'm like, maybe we do it in the podcast. Yeah. Can we hear yeah. about you? Yeah, your, totally. Yeah. I really, really want to hear about you. So I know just a tidbit, but I honestly, I don't know much about what your book is about and your story that you want to share. Yeah. Yeah. I'll share it here. And, and um, before I jump into that, uh, if you are listening and you are interested in writing a book, please do join me in this program. You can see it listed at uh, wedeepen.com too, or when you jump on um, the team or jump on a call with um, Maybay and her team, um, share that you've learned of this through this podcast and uh, through uh, the We Deepen network. And I'd love to have you a part of that. So if you've heard my story, feel free to go and register to do it. Um, otherwise I'm going to, cause I know some of my listeners, I figured, um, you might be listening to this podcast for the first time, or you might've just recently started listening. So I'll give you a little bit more insights about who I am as I, um, share that with May May as well. So my, you know, first off, it's always interesting. Like, where do you begin your story? Um, I am, you shared earlier that you're 50, I'm 42, and uh, and so there's a a vast depth of life experience. Um, I I wouldn't say that I've lived a life normal to to the people that I've seen around me. I'm I'm kind of an oddball from my family, very different from everybody else. Um, I tend to lead with my heart. Um, I spent the first decade of my career in New York City. I had worked with people in McKenzie in the past and um, even I, I dated a man for a, a, a little bit of, of time that he was, um, he worked for McKenzie too. Um, but I spent my career uh, in sales, marketing, business development. I launched what became Grubhub, Seamless Web as the, as a salesperson um, right out of college uh, I convinced the restaurants that the future was going to be online ordering. And uh, and I was super successful at that. I was the top sales person for our company out of a team of 20 um, at like 23 years old. If my name was not on the top of the board, I would come on the weekends and make sure that I was the top salesperson. And uh, I ended up, you know, after the company went through some transition, you know, they, they did their national launch. They didn't need a team of 20 people. Um, so one day I showed up in my office and they pulled me aside and said, Christina, you're, you're fine. Um, 
but we're going to lay off pretty much your entire team. Um, so they cut us down to four. My sales VP and my sales manager were uh, essentially demoted and we were all four salespeople for the organization. That was hard for me to stomach as like a 24 year old. Where'd all my friends go? Um, of course, I, I'm in our office at the time. We were all under the age of 30. Uh, even the, the CEO and, and such. This is like, you know, this is 2003, 2004. Um, and, and so, of course, they didn't do it in this in some angelic way. It was messy. It was chaos. And I thought, well, what next? What do I got to do with my career next? I went to pharmaceutical sales. Uh, that's what they said. You know, if you're good at sales, go sell pharma. Yep. Uh, so I worked for a company called Santa Fe Aventus for a couple years. And I had a, you know, living downtown in New York City, 99 John Street and had a company car and great health benefits, a good salary. I was 25 and my territory was, uh, um, I'm probably even as I'm, as I'm, I'm giving you this back, sir, I'm probably telling too much information, but, um, I just remember, you know, selling, try, trying to convince doctors. My main product was Ambien CR and my biggest competitor was Ambien was produced by the same company, but regular Ambien was going generic. So they needed to convert patients over to Ambien CR as quickly as possible. And that's what my bonus was dependent on. Um, it wasn't, it was dependent on that conversion. So if a patient came in and they were on Lunesta and they converted to Ambien CR, that didn't help me. Or if a patient came in and they couldn't sleep and so the doctor gave them Ambien CR, that didn't help me. My bonus was dependent on the conversion. And I remember at 25 thinking like, this is so dumb. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like, first off, why don't they get them to like shut their blinds or, you know, get their temperature in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I didn't know too much about psychology at that moment, just yet. But I also was, I think there was like an intuitive knowing that there was something deeper happening with somebody if they couldn't sleep than just prescribing them a pill. Uh, I left there, um, I quit that job. I was really good at interviewing. Um, I then went to on to become the director of business development for a boutique event company. And then I started working with a mentor around um, building an organization around network marketing in the sense of introducing people to other people. She had a access to the most interesting human beings and wanted to connect them and make that her job. And so I started um, to, to follow her and then she started to have these mental breakdowns. So my mentor then started having like panic attacks and anxiety and her, the, her mentor then swooped me up, which was the last full-time gig that I had where I was the chief of staff for um, a, a, the CEO of a marketing agency. And my boss, um, she, she had this vision for me that I was going to take over a company. She was grooming me to be the CEO of her company. And she, when she would we'd walk into business meetings, she would introduce me as like, meet Christina. She's going to be the next CEO of the mix. And we were a small 18 person agency in, in New York City. And um, I loved working with her and I loved the job, but I also felt that it just, there was something missing. And around that time, I started studying Kabbalah. Um, Kabbalah is Jewish mysticism. And um, going into the center, and I, the Kabbalah has courses, level one, level two, level three. And I started to see the world a bit differently. You know, one of the things they teach you if you're in a toxic environment, exit the toxic environment. Everything that we desire is outside of our comfort zone. So you have to live a foot, you know, a, a, a foot in the uncomfortability to achieve all your dreams. It's like there's a castle and there's a moat and you have to swim through the moat. Um, and I could see that the jobs that I had before just weren't fully aligned with my soul. And um, so I'm studying Kabbalah, but I also have this like self-doubt because I live in New York City, so many smart people. I don't have my MBA. Um, I had this vision. My first company was Game Lace, which was to mix 
um, sex and sports, um, intimate apparel, um, like Yankees pinstripe corset, Giants flirty number. And so I had wanted to mix this, the sex and sports and, and, but I, again, had the, you know, the limiting belief or the self doubts that, you know, how is the NFL going to give me the licensing for the organization? And, um, and around that time I was out with a good guy friend and he said to me, you know, Chris, I created this nickname for you. He said, don't let this go to your head, but you're a feminine weapon. You're so I love that. You're feminine so, weapon. There's the title of your book. Feminine weapon. He said, you're so oh, business. You <laughs> you're so business savvy, mm -hmm. but you're such a girl. And I felt in that moment that a cape had attached to my back and I could fly. I went home that night. I bought feminineweapon.com unknowing what it become. I continued on my game life journey. And at the end of these conversations with women, I would say, um, you know, I have this other brand feminine weapon and their eyes will light up and they're like, feminine weapon. What's that? And I was like, I don't, I don't really know what it is. Um, but the more when I talked to the more I realized I wasn't the only feminine weapon. There are many women with these deep desires and ambitions and on a mission to fulfill them. And so I morphed it into the shared identity. Uh, it's, a. Uh, um, it's a, it's a, it's a woman who is um, fully authentic and committed to her growth, mm -hmm. um, who is out there to serve love into the world. And I started gathering women in New York City underneath this brand coming up. And actually our first event was an intro to Kabbalah. Then we did something on sex and relationships. And then I started hosting concerts where I had female singer songwriters performing that led into the first ever feminine weapon day, which is um, January 30th, um, 2014 was the first feminine weapon day. Um, we have now since over the past decade raised over um, $77,000 for children of abuse, extreme poverty and human trafficking through that initiative. Beautiful. However, with feminine weapon, this is where it kind of gets complicated on where the story goes is that in, um, so I, we do feminine weapon day, the first one, um, January 30th, 2014, and like put game lease aside, start running with this concept. And I'm like, well, we need money um, to build it into a brand. I thought it, you know, like spiritual gangster would be put feminine weapon on everything. And uh, so we did a crowdfunding campaign in, um, in, in, you know, the spring of, of 2014. And during the crowdfunding campaign, one of my friends who I grew up with had said to me, you know, Chris, I go to work every day. Um, why should I give to your crowdfunding campaign? And I looked at her and I was like, well, Jen, uh, I've gone to your bachelorette party, your bridal shower, your wedding, your baby shower, then you had a divorce, then this, like, I've done all these things for you. This is my dream. So right. I went about marryyourdreams.com, redirected my crowdfunding campaign to marryyourdreams.com, sold tickets to my wedding, and then I I married myself um, and we raised $27,000 in that crowdfunding campaign. That's incredible. I had Zelma Davis from CNC Music Factory perform live. Everybody dance now. Dun, 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 dun. And then... Two weeks after that event, my mother, I was 33 at the time, my mother asked me if I was dating anybody. And I look at her, this blank stare, like date, dating it. Do not see what I just did. Where do you think this man is hiding? Um, I'm living in New York City. I quit my job. I'm aiming to make it and building this brand. And now you want to know about my dating life? Uh, well, at the time, 2014, Tinder is the new hot thing. I've never done any online dating pretty much anti-online dating. But now I had friends who are highly respected who are swiping on this dating app and I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, did it for three weeks. I found it to be labor intensive and time consuming. There must be a better way. Uh, by the way, I have a feeling my back of my head is like, you're thinking the story is way too long. Um, <laughs> um, but this is why I'm going to jump in and, and do this course. And uh, so Essentially for then, from that point on, I, I thought that there is, there is, must be a better way than swiping on the dating app. I began producing dating events um, for two years from 2014 to 2016. I produced an event called Underground Untouch. That became my primary focus. One of my advisors was the editor or director of Entrepreneur Media. And he's like, Feminine Weapon is this great concept. And I know you love it, but I don't know how you're going to make money on it. Whereas with this dating stuff, you're really good at it. Do it, do it well, get it into multiple cities um, and then sell it. And you can go back to Feminine Weapon. Well, that work actually, so many people were doing 
um, women's empowerment, but not many people were doing stuff that were integrating both men and women um, together um, to empower them to have healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, So essentially after doing, we uh, underground untouched for two years, I was like, the problem is much bigger. Most people didn't grow up observing healthy relationships. Topic is neglected in our educational curriculum. And um, I needed to to have more experiences, get in states of play and joy and fun, um, learn relational skills. And I expanded it into We Deepen. And it was like, what if we built ClassPass, um, which is the fitness app that brought all of the um, boutique fitness studios into one platform? What if we did that for all the experiences, courses and education that can help people have more meaningful, loving relationships? And um, it became super successful in the LA area pre-COVID with in-person events. Um, And uh, so now within... You know, I'm back at it. We've added matchmaking, relationship coaching. We still promote the events. You know, COVID was a little bit of change up for us. And um, and this podcast itself follows my entrepreneur journey to build We Deepen. And throughout this 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 journey, it's not that I just started this and I I thought like, you know, initially, um, we'll just we'll get everyone into a room and I'll find my guy and everybody else will find theirs and we'll all live happily ever after. And instead, God was like, oh, you want to work in relationships and you didn't necessarily go to school for this. So we're going to give you an education on it. And we're going to send you this guy after this guy, after this guy, after this guy. And um, and through that, I would study because I tried to figure out what was happening for me personally. How could I help everybody else? And so the story that I believe I want to write right now is more focused on my dating adventures. Um, with the interwoven of the the lessons I learned about love and attachment to the emergent love model, um, to vulnerability, to commitment, to erotic wellness, BDSM um, along the way. Well, I love that. I love that. I love the interweaving of business books with memoir. Like a lot of people are like, should it be a business book? Should it be a memoir? And the thing is that in this day and age that we live in, as you know, because I'm sure you follow a lot of authors and stuff. If you're not telling your personal, authentic, vulnerable story, you're going to lose your audience, right? I mean, people want that. Mm -hmm. They demand it. They demand it. So if you want a business book of like, you know, here's how I built this company, blah, blah, blah. Well, you better be telling your personal story. You better be sharing some failures, challenges, heartbreaks along the way. That is that is what is required in today's marketplace, which I'm really happy about. I love that shift that I've seen in the past 25 years. So your book is right on target with that. And I think the business background gives you credibility as someone to speak about this, which is really necessary. If you're going to talk about love and relationships, you need to have some credibility, but also you sharing your personal story makes it more Mm -hmm. appealing. So yeah, that's it. And then you do have to tell some of your backstory. You'd probably, you know, go fairly quickly through some of that. But I think that the backstory and, you know, being your top sales agent at Grubhub and then um, the pharma industry, which um, is mad, right? I mean, like a little bit of that, definitely that's going to intrigue people, but you want to get to the point of one of the things we talk about in the course is deciding when, what, what is the time frame? What is the time frame? Even if it's a business book, what is the time frame? Right? Is it your entire life story? Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, Joan Didion year of magical thinking? It was one year. Um, is it, you know, Cheryl Strayed's wild her journey on the Pacific Coast Trail, right? But with flashbacks to other pieces. So you kind of pick your time frame. So you're probably going to pick a, you know, general time frame. Then you can still talk about other experiences, flashbacks, but you're probably going to start the story with like the phone call that said feminine weapon. Oh, interesting. I also thought about starting it with, I, I did a reality TV show um, with uh, Andy Cohen in, during COVID. It was called x Rated, It, where I, uh, the, the, the premise of the show, there used to be a woman who would go on dates and she would send surveys to all her dates. 
And, um, and so they turned that into a reality show. So I had three of my exes who had, um, taken surveys about me ahead of time. And I had taken the survey. So we, I rated myself, they rated me. And then live on set with Andy Cohen, I sat with him and my ex, each ex one at a time. And they would reveal the results, the ratings of Christina um, on affection, initiating intimacy, um, spontaneity, reality. Um, yes. So that, that was so vulnerable. Wow. That's, that's that was vulnerable. Vulnerable. And, and when that's I showed up, than most people are going to be willing to do. And when I showed up on set, they're wow. like, and, um, and at the end of it, we're going to line up the guys and ask if you want to get back together with any of them. And I was like, wait, they didn't sign up for that. What are we doing to these men? Uh, <laughs> don't they have a say? And the last guy on the show, which is, uh, which was the, the most, I think, uh, um, I think the, the most sensitive or emotional ex that I sat with, I had proposed, we, we drove cross country during COVID, um, when I, you know, I wasn't fleeing from Los Angeles during the, you know, COVID or the pandemic. And I, um, as we arrived, um, towards the end of the trip, I had proposed that we take 90 days off that we don't talk for 90 days. And, um, that short circuit, his brain. And, and I knew at the time that he did not like that idea. So I shifted it and we didn't end up doing it, but that became a very big part of the show. Andy Cohen, like, why did you propose 90 days? Why did you not want to talk to him 90 days? And here I'm at in this moment in time where I literally days ago, and did a connection um, or asked for 90 days of no contact with somebody. So I'm finally getting to actually have my night because I think my soul just wanted to like meet somebody and be like, I'm stepping away from you for 90 days to see what this is about. Um, so that I also thought, and which is a, a relationship psychology um, practice that people do to rewire the brain and, and to see if something is a healthy connection for you. And that's going to be the time that I'm writing the book is during the, the 90 days of no contact with this other human. That being. is amazing. That's amazing. I love that. I absolutely love that. That fits together really beautifully. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm so enthusiastic. I would be so honored to work with you with people in your community. It's going to be really fun. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Um, so if you're listening consider joining us. I'm happy to have a conversation with you about it privately. Reach out to me, um, connect with Mamie's team. You'll have a one-on-one -on -one phone call. You'll hear all about the program and decide if it's right for you. Thank you, Mimi, for taking the time to uh, record this with me. Thank you, Christina. I think you're just an extraordinary person. I'm honored to know you and um, I'm sure the people in your community are as well ditto i'm so excited to yeah. work with you yeah. and thank you thank you all for listening to another episode of deepen with christina again if you do enjoy the show please do like subscribe follow rate it give it five stars helps more people find it helps me continue to share it and if you know of somebody who may be interested in joining us for this program who you see that they should write a book send them this episode have them join us as well okay until next time bye for now